I told you. We told you, Internet. It was going to happen. And I only got one thing to say. I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. It is time to not be nice because we are talking about Roadhouse 2024. Mm. I am your number one guy, your host with the most able alongside of me. They call him Kalo K, the Roadhouse God, Leo. (laughs) How are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) He big mad. Well, you know, we're just going to go to the next person. Spread love is the Brooklyn way, big chase. How much love are we spreading for this fucking movie? Who the fuck is this guy? Yep. Man, listen, deep in the heart of Texas, not in Florida, where the roadhouse is, it's Wind Easy. How you doing? I'm I'm where the real roadhouse is. Okay? <laughs> right. right. We're going to the double deuce, not wearing, the roadhouse. You ain't wearing no stupid ass suit jacket around here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We're just we're gonna get into um the Roadhouse 2024 movie. I'll I'll start a little bit. Um everything I saw from this trailer from my point of view is pretty much true. Um, Did not like this movie. Should never have been called Roadhouse. Um, Really should have just been called UFC fighter gone bouncer goes to Florida to beat up a bunch of guys to protect the bar. Um, You know, I uh, don't really have much good to say about this. I will say um, Jake Gyllenhaal um, played a good performance of someone that works at a bar and I had some cool <laughs> Shit. moments. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish what my fucking sentence. Bar is let that? me finish Uh-oh. my sentence. You didn't let me finish my sentence. <laughs> that works at a bar and had some cool fight scenes, but ain't no way that man's name is Dalton. That's what I was going to say. There were some cool fight scenes in there. I'll give it to him. Apart from that, Conor McGregor just being Conor McGregor and not, I don't even, can someone tell me his real name in the movie? Like, what's his name in the movie? Does anyone even know? Like I don't know. Man, uh, it's Conor McGregor. <laughs> it's Conor he McGregor. Has a fucking name, bro. Yeah, the the bar, the bar itself, just like by the beach in the water, I just didn't feel it. Um, I don't know. No heart and soul in this movie. I'll start there. I'll let uh, I'll let I'll let Leo go because uh, he has he has a lot of hate in his heart for this movie right now. So go ahead, go ahead. Tell hey, me. I wanted to see fucking Conor McGregor walk like he has a fucking two pounds of shit in his ass. I would have fucking would have paid for pay per view. Second off, I don't want to see your ass in the first fucking ten seconds of the movie. Third off, you ain't that fucking bad. Point blank period. Is that it? Are you, are you done? Are you done? Point blank I, no, I got more for later on, but this is just the, the beginning of all this fucking stupid ass people that right. didn't watch the first movie. Yeah. Started, started talking shit on the internet saying that we didn't know we were a bunch of old heads. But meanwhile, you gotta keep fucking making shit from back then to make yourself relevant now. Right. Oh, the hit the comments, you can all fucking yeah. <laughs> Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor's name in the movie was Knox. In case anyone was wondering, he was a hit nobody, man. Nobody was. It was so memorable. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about hitting, but uh, for, first of all, let, let me just premise by saying this: Number one, um, three of the four people you see currently on this screen have worked at bouncers, as work as bouncers, for over a decade. So at the end of the day, this movie is is personal on a lot of levels. Now, Jake Gyllenhaal, I'm not particularly necessarily mad at. I thought that he he he, he did good. This movie did not have to be called Roadhouse. It could have been called anything else. Number one, it it could really could have. But the problem here is, first of all, let's start with the whole bad boyish type of theme that was around it, because this could have been Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. In a movie, the action, the, the 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 way that they filmed it, the way that they told the story, this was like you know straight. Yo, shout out to Jake for stealing pages out of Bruce Willis's Die Hard because that who that's who the character he was playing in this movie, a guy who had been through something and didn't give a shit about the world. Sound familiar? Let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about the fact that there's nobody in this fucking club that they're trying to save, like absolutely nobody. On the night that Conor McGregor comes in and tears the club apart, there's like 12 people in the entire fucking club. This movie didn't have to be made. It was all the workers. You you, you could have let this fucking bar sit around for another month or two. It would have been closed because there's nobody in there. There's nobody on the outside when they're fighting. So where the hell is all the people? There's nobody there. Nobody. Hmm. So what the hell are you fighting for? First, okay. All right. 
we start off with the fucking beginning scene that we saw off. We start with Conor McGregor jumping out of a mil- out of a window since he's such a badass. What he was making, he was doing something with somebody else's wife. He jumps out the window, butt ass naked. So you get a good fucking two and a half minutes of him strutting down the free down the street. All you get is ass shot and him walking around like he's holding his shit. Oh. Not to mention that the, the head buddy walks into the fucking club, head butts the dudes and takes his fucking coat. Well, bro, I thought you wanted to be naked. Why do you need to steal somebody else's shit? And then you get all this dumb shit with Jake Gyllenhaal that he's the baddest motherfucker in Texas because... He, he goes into Post Malone is whooping everybody ass. He's going on and beat six fighters. And Post Malone is looking all Post Malone-ish. And he's whooping everybody ass. Okay. Then Jake Gyllenhaal steps in and Post Malone just stops. Yeah. He says, oh, I'm not fighting him. I'll kick everybody else's ass, but I'm not fighting him. Like, why was Post Malone in this movie? Like, what are why? it doesn't make no fucking sense? The and then you are, and you are, you are, you, Jake Gyllenhaal, you're the baddest motherfucker on the planet. You just came from a bar that you didn't have to fight, and then you just won a pocket purse, right? So you end up going to the <laughs> parking lot <laughs> and you get fucking stabbed in the side because you wanted to. Yo. <laughs> Shout out to the alligator that ate old boy because I was tired of seeing yep. him on the fucking screen, bro. Shout out to shout out to the alligator, bro. Just this this whole fucking premise of this fucking movie should have never been called Roadhouse. <sighs> it was and shot. I, it was shot fucking horribly. Fucking it, horribly. It, it the action scenes. Way, the fucking action scenes were all over the fucking place. The cameras was all fucking sitting all over the place. The fucking acting. If you guys like Jeff, all he did was this movie is work out and train with Conor McGregor. That's it. Yeah, I mean. Listen, I, I, like I said, I, I wasn't mad so much at Jake, but everybody else's fucking uh, performances was just like loose. And ch- I did, I did not believe fucking Conan, not at all. Like, bro, I, like he was just acting like a wild asshole. And you know, I guess that was supposed to be his character. I get it, but I just didn't believe it. The moments where he was supposed to be, t- the whole, the whole theme of the movie was entirely too fucking happy. The entire, yes. like, even was, when they were fighting, it was like a happy fight. It wasn't like <laughs> a fight to the death. It wasn't like, oh shit, somebody's gonna die. It was like, like you, I never felt. Stop it. No Stop it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, God, it, this I, fucking movie was so fucking bad. It was so fucking just, bad. Oh, Dude, we listen. Oh, it, you. If, if you didn't like name the movie Roadhouse and like maybe named it something else, and like it was a, you know, maybe say it was loosely a translation of like some Roadhouse, whatever. Like you know what I mean? It didn't have to be connected to Roadhouse in Roadhouse any ask. way. Like you could have like called where, dumbass in the bar. Dude, that where is perfectly where is me. where is really teaching people how to bounce in a bar? Where's like a, a, the Wade Garrett character? Uh, you know that like helped Dalton do things. Like where the bad guy? Look at this freaking guy. That's your that's your uh, was it yeah. your Brad Wesley of the movie? Like, come on, man. His dad was in jail. We never actually saw the dad, but don't worry. He called up uh, Conan McGregor, as uh, as we like to yeah, call him. Hey, now. look, he looks like all you young cats in the comments saying, oh, don't bite off the new school. <laughs> there you go. There goes your fucking idol right there, fucking Nepo yeah, baby. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and what was the point of, of, of Kevin Carroll's uh, and his daughter? What, what, what was the point of them? Oh, you mean Big Dick? What, what was the point of that? Was, that, that was the that was the sheriff's name. The sheriff's name was Big Dick. No, no, not not, not him. The, the oh no, the, the other little guy and his daughter that owned the store like next door. Or there, was no, there was no connection to the. They story. tried to make they tried to make that like the guy that owned the car shop, but it had it made no freaking uh, sense really? at all. Bro, first of all, when he goes in there after them, you don't see what happened to them. You don't know. You like you like they just the like, whole story just goes over there. Right. The whole shit just disappeared off the screen. Like, yeah, you just like, oh yeah, they're in the hospital. Right. But well, Jake Gyllenhaal, <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal knows to show up at the house and kill a guy because of it. That, but we don't, you know, we don't know why. He just kills him. Yeah, oh, but right. no, then you have the, the owner of the club that hired fucking Jake Gyllenhaal. Doesn't tell him nothing that he's getting into. Right. By the way, oh. Jessica Williams, we, yeah, we really Williams. We love you very much. Hi. You thought you were wonderful. Hi. We love you. Whatever. Can I get uh, you, you, this he was. She tells him nothing at all. Oh, I'll give you five thousand dollars a week to do what? What? 
To slap five guys. Come, slap open five hands, guys open hand arm. slap a bunch of guys. Open hand slap a bunch of guys. Break one guy's arm and work out and look good without your shirt off. I mean, like, like how much, that, how much money, $1, how much money was exchanged between the UFC and Amazon? That's all I need to know. Oh, yeah, dude, that's that's what I need to know. I need to know who paid for the licensing. It was enough. Right. And by the way, uh, if you're gonna you, if you're gonna show up and use our our ring and show up and uh, you know use our way in, uh, you're gonna put Conor McGregor in your movie. So yeah, that's what you're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. and he's yeah, he, believe me, all it is is Conor McGregor high on coke. That's it. Yep. And 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 the truth of the this matter, scene was kind of funny, I thought, but so, you know, open hand slap everyone. I felt bad you. for the kid he was slapping, bro. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah, a he nice kid. It. He deserved it. He, he was a nice kid, bro. He was actually having conversations. This is what I'm talking about. He's having honest conversations with this kid, and he ends up slapping him and throwing him around. He doesn't break his arm. Oh, no, he, he does break his arm. Sorry. He's yeah. The kid is actually being nice to him and doesn't want to hit him, but he has to hit him because he's with a with this hey, ragtag bunch of group are, of bikers. You are judged by the yeah, company it, you it, keep, It's my called friend. tough love, Leo. It's, t- it's called it's tough right. love. Right. Tough love to and a person that doesn't you, know how to fucking fight doesn't make no fucking sense. Bro, you but you you see what happened at the end, right? He was like, I gotta get away from these guys. Tough love, bro. You learned that lesson. Lesson like, learned. Hang out he, with the no, he just didn't want to get his other arm broke. He was scared <laughs> straight. Some, some lessons cost Dude. more than others. Again, but it was just another version of let me lure them outside so they don't cause a ruckus in the bar. But instead of just leaving them out there, we open hand slap them and drive them to the hospital. Yeah. So I got Yo. a question. In the original Roadhouse. When did you see Patrick Swayze get his ass kicked and just walk the hell out of the bar? Hmm. Yeah, for no apparent reason. Oh, no. Wait, when did you see Patrick Swayze just let the bar go into a fucking pure mayhem? And he was just sitting there. And he was just sitting there with a shit ending grin sipping, and drinking a fucking, coffee. Little fucking coffee. Come on, man. Yo, if, all if, right. If don't, uh, name, don't I, fucking tarnish fucking Patrick Swayze's legacy and name this shit Roadhouse. I got to tell you I got to tell you something in the middle of this effing fight at the end when uh they take him and uh what was it Jake Gyllenhaal's head gets hit the piano and one of them say oh this piano needs to be tuned and then the other one goes sounds fine to me I was completely set like bro like it, yo it, there's so many Why? predictive shots in this movie that it was absolutely crazy. Like you could, you you know what they're gonna say next. The 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 setup for the jokes was, was not coming out of left field. You already knew what it was. Oh wait, and Dalton is, a, is an explosive expert too, by the way. Okay. Did you guys know? Oh that? yeah, I knew that. I did know that. Actually. Another eighties reference. He's a MacGyver. Yeah, yeah, he's a MacGyver. Love he's gonna make bombs and shit. Love that for him. Yeah, because that's what they teach you in the UFC. Look. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. Yo, this scene was a scene was literal ass, bro. Literal ass. Get your man. Oh, I was so annoyed at this scene. Like, why did I get that phone from? Dude, he headbutt. This is his move: is headbutting people. I mean, and normally in the UFC, in the UFC, he wouldn't take half of the shots that Jake hit him with. So no, that's why that's why he's not when Khabib Jake, fucking made Jake would have been him. dead. Jake would have died. <laughs> it's a movie though, man. It's a movie. That's I it. understand it's a yeah. fucking movie, but What's now it? now I see I'm I'm hating a little bit extra because all the bullshit that oh this is give it a chance, give it a chance. It's a little bit extra. Yeah. It's a little bit extra tonight. A little foam on top. That's what you got? You got some foam on top. Got you. Let's <laughs> I, go. I got a, a little I got a little bit of foam on top and then I'm Let's adding go. a fucking cherry cuz you got this little fucking whatever the fuck he is. He should have got his throat taken out like this, like, like the, the fucking regular uh, Roadhouse guy did. Mm, so mm. The eagle called his ass. That so was a fight. Maybe, uh. maybe, maybe I. So maybe I missed it. Who actually called uh, Knox? Um, uh, his dad, the father. The the father that we never saw. The yeah, father yeah. that we never saw. Was, we had to we had to figure the... out firsthand that his father, uh, third hand, that his father called uh, the guy Knox. Yeah. So the father yeah. that we never saw, who's in federal prison, picked up yep. the phone and called he's, this guy. He's an absentee yep. dad. Don't worry about it. Well, so, it's okay. He, it's okay because Roadhouse Two, this time uh, it's personal. Uh, yeah. Here yeah, comes the so, dad. Yeah. So. Dude, the, the, the thing is, is that okay? You. You have Jake Gyllenhaal, and he's trying to stretch this character that he went too far in the ring. Blase, blase, he killed his friend. And then, oh, I, I, one of those scenes, I was like, oh, I don't know how to control myself when I go too far. But meanwhile, in martial arts, 
the first thing that they teach you is self-control. Is it not? Well, control is well, the, one of the core. written in the script like that. Yeah, it wasn't it, written in the script. <laughs> it's the one. It's the one tenet that they have you in mixed martial arts or in any martial arts. They teach you self-control because they know how far you can take it. So you tell me you're in a professional fight with your friend and you end up going too far and you black out and you kill your friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's fucking. But that's really fucking believable and great for the martial arts world that we got fucking unhinged mixed martial artists. Oh, but Conor McGregor, uh, a drug addict, crazy person who throws chairs at buses. Yeah, yeah that makes all sense. Well, I mean, to me, it would have made more sense if Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal would have been the ones who had the fight. The fight either ended up in a draw or whatever, and then they find they find out because the uh, the one guy finds out his whole background, and they have this conversation where you find out what happened. Well, that could have been the whole story with him and Conan McGregor had this fight. It was never resolved. They call Conan in, and then you know now he's crazy. Would have made a lot more sense. Why are you trying to help this fucking movie, Jay? I'm just well, saying he's trying to be he's trying to <laughs> not be fine. But all right, he's he's sorry. Been all right, so how how about how about this? We're obviously crapping on this movie for reasons warranted, but like why don't we just talk about the old one and mm. really explain like why we feel the way we feel? Like, why is this a classic, especially from like the bouncers in the room who have been to have done this for a long time? Why is this movie special to us and why do we care? <sighs> Listen, the first thing, the first thing, like I said before, was um, we 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 we've been there. When this movie came out, and we were all bouncing, the rules that he were, was setting forth was the rules that we actually abide by. If you are a real bouncer, I'm not talking about somebody that they hired to throw people through windows and on the street. Real bouncers are there to not just throw people out, but, but also protect the property of the place that you're working. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. You're supposed to see the trouble before it happens, and then you're supposed to intervene. It doesn't always have to end in fighting and whatnot. Those fun nights when we it's had, you know, we did did fighting, <laughs> you know, but that's not what you're supposed to be there for. So the, the, the rules that he set forth about what's supposed to happen are important because it saves lives. It saves the life of the person next to you and whatnot. Yep. This also had its old like overtone, like he when he called Sam Elliott in and whatnot. Like Sam Elliott is is the OG, like yo, yep. he's Sage. the one that's, that's got his back, but also like keeping him like you know level headed and whatnot. Um, and the whole thing just had an even, nice, even tone. And why is Roadhouse from 89 our darker movie than Roadhouse 2024? Oh, that's just, you know. Mm -hmm. why, why is it a darker movie? Oh, because we actually made movies that are original. Oh, so, oh sorry, I said that. My fault. I mean, bro, listen, with the exception of the fact that Patrick Swayze out there twirling around doing tai chi by the water. <laughs> but uh, that was but that's him like this fight scene is control Yo. that's because that's learning that's him controlling his anger but though you have jake gillando saying oh uh, you really like me when i'm angry <laughs> Dude, he might as well just said have said that oh i don't know when to stop this is what he's fucking said bro yeah, <laughs> you're a mixed martial artist how the fuck are you doing that Mm -mm 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 -mm. Which, which I agree with Leo, because how the hell are you not being able to control yourself, but you're a bouncer? Horrible business. Mm -hmm. I'm just Horrible like, business. I don't know. It's a question that we have. Trouble. And, listen, and, if, it. and if you have, and if, like Chase said, in the bouncing world, one of the lines that we played in the beginning of this trip, or beginning of this, is be nice until I tell you not to be nice. There's always a head bouncer. He's the one that tells you, oh, green light or not green light. Because you never know who you're touching, yep. especially in this day and age. Yep. So if you get a green light, it's a green light. If you don't get a green light, you don't get a green light. Okay. But when you give that green light, it's all hands on fucking deck. And this movie, there was never all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. He tells a brand new rookie bouncer with the guy with the knife, step back and punch him in the face. <laughs> Yo, I was like, you got to get this kid killed. Yep. Are you kidding me? You got to get him death. killed. Oh, when he takes a big swing, step back and take a punch in, his, in him in the face. That's that's his advice. And what bouncer is going to let you get that fucking close? 
Not anybody worth What's good shot. about being this yeah, close is that it. I could just hit you. Not anybody else ever worked. First of all, mm. when Conan McGregor walks in and he's 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 got a golf club, I'm like, well, who the fuck is man in the door? <laughs> I'm like, who, 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 who who's man in the door that let a guy walk in with a golf club? Like, like this is what we're saying about how unbelievably unreal the movie is. First no, of Chase, all, there was only three bouncers in the whole place. But this, but yeah, and, and two of them had worked like a week. <laughs> one was a professional boxer. Uh, one was a professional boxer, and the other one was a <laughs> the other one was a, a barback kid that was handling bouncing and barbacking yeah. at the same time. Yeah, I'm like, it, okay, give me hold up, hold up. I gotta I gotta clear these bottles real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all keep y'all keep fighting. I'll be right back. Yeah, Hold on. So yeah, Alice, so <sighs> table seven. Uh, Jesus, it it just was terrible. You know, they again. I was not really mad at Jake. I thought that Jake did a pretty decent job, but I just think that the the whole movement of the film, the way that it was filmed, the way that it was written, was just terrible. Like it just really was terrible. They they left a lot of holes in the story. Um, it didn't make any sense. Like the, the the club itself, the bar itself didn't have to be that big if you couldn't you didn't have enough people to fill it, which just didn't make any sense. The whole point is that the bar is supposed to be completely right. How is the bar rowdy when there's only 12 people in the whole damn club? That's a crazy 12 people. club? You get after after uh, wait, but this is the other the fun part about it. After everybody else is doing the work and he's just sitting in the corner and clean and he's they're cleaning everybody out because he's such a badass. He doesn't. Have, the only thing that he needed was slapping five fucking guys that don't know how to fight. He had to slap five guys and now he gets to sit at the bar and lets the bar back do all the work now. Yeah. So this guy's fighting and then he got to go clean up. Exactly. And then he's just sitting at the at the corner of the bar drinking coffee espressos because you're you're in so called Miami. But oh. I got one good thing to say about this movie. Amazon, thank you for shooting 90% of this in VR. I appreciate your money. <laughs> oh. That's the one Thanks. good thing that I have about this whole fucking movie. And oh. that's that. Like, look, busy ass bar, more than 12 people. Sure is. Yes, <laughs> man. Like, it, it's supposed to be a smoky room with mad unruly's in there. That's unruly. the whole point. Yep. Like there's like twelve people in the whole club. There's nobody outside in the parking lot the entire right. time. You see my and man in the back playing like, slide guitar. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like I, I was just about to say. So it's speaking of that guy. Like the word of mouth of Dalton in the original movie versus the word of mouth of Dalton in this movie was literally like night and day. Like Dalton back in the older movie had like an actual reputation of being this bouncer. He's coming in to clean stuff up and da da da. Literally, they were just like ah, this guy's just. Fighting and uh, he's gonna help clean up the bar. Yeah, he's just a fighter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we just heard he's in fight. town. Like yeah, no, there's just there was any angle you looked at this movie, there was no substance. You didn't feel like attached to it. Like there was no feeling. Like it was just like this part, this part, this part, this yeah. part. Game over. Like they shot a bunch then, of scenes and then stuck them together. Yeah. And another thing, the girlfriend scene, the whole doctor and him. They try to do that all over again. Yeah, and that then was, she takes him on a yeah. boat with her ex boyfriend's boat. Yeah, first then he go. Then then Dalton ends up stealing the boyfriend's boat and blowing it up. Oh, the ex boyfriend is a fucking uh, uh, a Florida car. PD. Right. Oh, bring it way. right back. I'll, I'll bring it right back. Oh, bring just have it back in like two hours. <laughs> what? what? The development of their relationship was so fast. I was just thinking, like, damn. I guess it's just how you were raised. Because <laughs> no, it's not even that. I I actually like in every aspect of this movie. You and this is like crazy to say because it's freaking Roadhouse, but like you can see how the world was back then and how the world is now. It's mm. a perfect example of where we are now versus then. She for the streets. <laughs> Yo, bro, she she definitely was for the streets because, bro, yep. that that thing like that thing was so she quick. I was like. Streets. Yo, she just was like took his ass to a sand God. room, baby. <laughs> That's like straight out of nowhere. She just thought it like, like, yo, whoa. Damn. Like, she took his ass to a sand room and started and he tells her, Oh, this is this is his big emotional moment. Uh, you, you shouldn't get involved with somebody like me. Was it? Completely that absurd. Was, that was it. 
Love yeah, it. And she like, tells him, nobody tells me what to do. It's, oh, oh yeah. and oh, wait, are we gonna are we gonna talk yeah, about how he, gotcha. are we gonna talk about how he just gave away what two hundred fifty thousand dollars or however much it was to the store owners and no one blinked an eye or thought where's the money okay, or any so, of that? Oh, look, that was more than two hundred fifty thousand. Right, whatever it was, I, I forget how much okay. it was. Here's my question: Why did he leave it in the shot in the black guy's shop instead of leaving it with the bar? Or another thought: the Why didn't he was just a fucking bitch? And she didn't tell him what the fuck was going on. Or, or why didn't he just take it some for himself? Because the only reason he went down there was to get paid, get paid. right? So you're just gonna leave the money you went to get paid and, and like, take the job out of town. See, he, he wasn't a dick anymore. Leave him alone. Oh, okay. No, you're a big oh. dick because at least you fucking you know. Dude, he didn't have a. He didn't have his car. And when did Dalton become Superman? By the way. This motherfucker got hit by a F one fifty. He sure did. Wow. Oh wait, no. Did you see how he like flew from the boat and uh, like <laughs> Fast, and the, Fast and the Furious style? He flew from one boat to another onto the boat. <laughs> no, this movie. It. Why? This movie, this movie was no. so. First, he's an explosive expert. He knows how to drive a boat. Then, and then he all these. Now he's a stunt man. He's a stunt man. He's, he's a stunt man, right. and he can take so many hits. Right. He, he doesn't. He can get hit by a car, right. and the car can land on top of him right. in the water. He's a, he's and he's a, a height. He's a murderer who sets up scenes to make it look like someone killed someone else. Murderer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, he works in CSI too, bro. Right. He works in CSI. Yeah, he works in yeah. CSI. Damn. He, CSI. Mm -hmm. he knows how to take care of a dead body real quick. Yeah, right. Listen, I, I told you that they. Listen, I told you it was very bad boys. Bad boys. What you gonna do? theme type movie bro like they just threw a little bit of everything in here it didn't make any sense and the superpowers just really made the movie unbelievable because roadhouse was very just blood and guts it was very basic it even was real even was the, real. the final <laughs> fight with patrick swayze you know it wasn't no superpowers he didn't have a secret technique at the end of the damn movie <laughs> you know what i'm saying like it, it was a fight and yeah. that's the one thing that you really didn't get. Like they were like kicking each other's asses to a degree. They were trading punches, but I'm like, what the hell? Mm. If one of those chase in real in real life, one of those shots would have landed, either one of them would have been knocked no, out. Bro, there's, there's nobody standing after some of the shots that they you know pretended to throw at each other. There's there's nobody yeah. standing. I don't and, all, and also with the cin and the cinematography with it, um, in the last scene when you guys are fighting at the bar and you have your fake Dalton and he gets up and turns around. His eye on the ground. His eye was completely shut and closed and swollen. When he got back up, he could open both eyes. So now he's Wolverine. Yeah, he got super. He has a healing factor. He got a healing factor. He has a healing factor. And then, oh, oh, wait, wait. By the way, uh, Mr. Knox, Mr. Connor, sir, uh, you took more stabs than Wolverine has claws. Yeah, he's got a healing factor too because he's, Yo, he's, he's, he's a saber too. He go, no, he's a vampire because he was stabbing him with the wooden chair. <laughs> He's a saber about, right. about eight times. Yeah, but no, it was so the movie was no, fucking bro. fantastic. It was <laughs> fucking great. This was Dude, Deadpool you guys, Wolverine. you guys picked a fucking good one. They should have called it. this shit Roadkill. Oh, road oh, 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 fuck oh, out of here, man. With this yeah, it was absolutely shit. crazy. Um, listen, you made us you and we're, we're mad at you because you you made us do us this. Give it a chance, and now right. look what we have to deal with. Yep. Terrible. Yeah, we yeah. got uh we got roasted. We did a, a a trailer reaction for those that don't know, and we got roasted because we knew exactly what this movie was gonna be. Oh, and, no, we uh, were old heads. No, yeah, we were, we're, we're just we're, no. We were all a bunch we're, of old dudes gatekeeper. gatekeeping Roadhouse. We were gatekeeping Roadhouse. Uh, the answer to that is yes. We are a bunch of old dudes gatekeeping a very good fucking movie that should never have been remade. This shit is insulting. How dare and you? you? And you know what this just did to me? This made me rethink about our Crow trailer. Oh, I can't wait for that to come out. <laughs> I'm, well, look, I'm going to talk about that. I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that. I'll tell you this. I am exhausted. You this. I am exhausted. I'm tired of seeing this remake shit happening mm -hmm. year after year, month after year. Just keep pumping out old shit. Like, I'll keep saying it until they start doing it. Hollywood needs to start doing them good drugs again. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Here's the problem. You know what? We just had a strike, and now we're starting to pay the writers. Pay them some more so they can get some more drugs, because I need some original content coming out of this. Stop looking back 
in the 1980s and be like, that was a great movie. Let's redo let's, it. Let's redo it. No, no. It was a great movie back then because that's what that's what great movies came from. You can't take that movie and bring it here to this day and age and think you're going to make a winner. It's not going to happen. With a yeah. fucking Nepo, baby. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Exactly. Are you kidding me? A uh, well, look, nipple, baby? I didn't. I didn't watch this movie. I'm not gonna watch this movie. If my wife tried to make me watch this movie, I'm falling asleep. Yep. No, <laughs> right? For real, so I'm, for I'm, real. I'm pretty sure I can speak for everyone. Where uh, if we give, if we were to give this a, um, you know, one out of ten, ten being the best, one being the worst, negative we're gonna five. give it a, a, a negative three. McGregor, uh, McGregor's. That's what we'll do. It negative three McGregor's out of ten. <laughs> um, I don't really know, but um, that's a review. You know, for all the people that came at us the first time, come back at us now after you see this crap and then yeah. really have a fight with us because boy oh boy yeah. were you not correct. But um <laughs> You were wrong, <laughs> sir. Mama's <laughs> mama's <laughs> wrong <laughs> again. <laughs> you guys took more than you Please say something in the right, comments. But, but from uh from myself, Leo, Big Chase, and Windeezy, in all seriousness, let us know what you think in the comments below and like, comment, and subscribe if you want to hear some more from the old heads. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Kick Rumble. We're live every Thursday giving you all your nerdy needs. I'm going to take you out the same way I brought you in here, like this. I want you You to be nice until it's time to not be nice. Have a great night. Conor McGregor's ass. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what well, we told you, it's official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. non-stop, 24-7-3-6-5.